So I just recently got around to taking a look at Position Sticky, which is a CSS positioning property that allows you to define an element as relative until it hits the edge of a viewport, at which point it becomes fixed to the edge of the viewport while the parent element overlaps with that edge. The one thing it doesn't really provide a way to do is hook into the change of whether or not that is a relatively positioned or a fixed position element. Now, using some inspiration from an article by Eric Biddleman, I was able to use the intersection observer encapsulated within a custom Angular component to tap into that sticky state change in order to change the CSS class of something like a header when that header becomes fixed to the top of the viewport. So to see this is in action, let's scroll down here and you'll see that as that hits the top, we're adding this grayish background, we're adding a slight drop shadow and I'm moving the, uh, the text elements here away from the edge, right? So if I continue to scroll down, you'll see that section two then does the same thing, then section three and so on and so forth. Now, this coloring here and the indentation and the box shadow are being added through a conditional CSS class that changes the styling of that header. And we can take a look at the uh, HTML page for this app component. And we can quickly see here that my sticky header is that header. And you can see here is the uh, H3 and then here's the link to toggle, right? Here's the H3, here's the link to toggle. And what we can see is that this component, my sticky header, provides an input binding, sticky class, that allows me to provide a CSS class to conditionally add or remove during that sticky state change. And if we just take a look here at the dash dash stuck in the less CSS behind, code behind, we can see that the stuck class changes the background color and the box shadow and the padding and adds some transition timing to those property changes which again is why you can see that as we scroll down, you'll see that it changes color and it eases in and out of that transitional state. Okay, so let's take a look at how this My Sticky Header Angular component works, because under the hood, again, taking point from Eric Biddleman's uh, original post, I'm gonna be using the intersection observer to deduce when this component is fixed to the top edge of the browser's viewport. So internally, this sticky header component, if we look at the template here, we can see that it's doing really nothing but providing a thin wrapper around the content projection. The only thing that it's doing is it's adding these two HTML elements that define a top marker and a bottom marker around the host element. Now, if we look at the CSS for this sticky header component, what we'll see is that the bottom marker and the top marker are positioned just outside of the host context bindings, uh, host context um, uh, element. Uh, the top marker is just a pixel above the element and the bottom marker is just a pixel below the element. And what this allows us to do is treat the top marker and the bottom marker sort of like a little mini state machine. So if we think about where we are here, actually let's take a quick look at um, the markup. So if we can see Here's our bottom marker and our top marker, right? So right now, both the top marker and the bottom marker are visible in the viewport, which means that the header itself, the element, is not overlapping with the viewport edge. Now, as we scroll down, what we can see is that the top marker is actually off the top of the viewport and the bottom marker is still visible in the viewport. And because the top one is visible, uh, hidden and the bottom one is visible, we know that the host element here is overlapping with the top edge, which we know from the fact uh, that position sticky will adhere to the edge, means that this has entered the so-called sticky state. And then if we continue to scroll, and now we can see that both the top marker and the bottom marker are both hidden off the top of the viewport, we know that the host element itself is hidden and is therefore no longer in a sticky state and we can remove that CSS class. So uh, let's take a quick look now at how all of that works. So what we're gonna do is top marker and bottom marker refs, those are gonna be injected into the component as view children. And then in our ng on init, we're going to do a little feature detection to see if we actually support sticky position in Internet Observer. And if we do, we're going to create one 
give it a callback, and then have it observe that bottom marker and the top marker. Again, so we can treat this kind of like a little mini state machine. And when the um, callback to our intersection observer gets called, we're going to look at the entries, track the visibility of the entry, right, whether it's the top marker or the bottom marker, and then we're going to use the combination of the bottom marker and top marker visibility in order to deduce whether or not the element is quote unquote stuck uh, to the viewport. Again, if the top marker is not visible, meaning it's off the top of the viewport, but the bottom marker is still visible, it means that the element is very likely to be fixed to the edge, in which case we can say that the, uh, the next state will be stuck. And then if we're actually determining that this is a state change in the visibility or a state change of the stickiness, then we go ahead and we drop back down into the angular zone, set the is stuck property, and then add and remove the CSS class as needed. Now here you see that I'm dropping into the angular zone and that's because in our ng on init we actually run outside the angular zone to set up the intersection observer because this is going to fire more than actually is necessary to change the public properties on this component. So we don't want to trigger more change detection than is necessary, which is why we only drop back down into the angular zone when we actually know that the stickiness of the element is changing based on our uh, top marker and bottom marker changes. So uh, right now this is based on the assumption that the visibility or so that the header is stuck at a zero pixel offset. If you wanted to change that, you'd probably have to change some of the logic here. This is also assuming that the browser viewport is the viewport for the stickiness. If you wanted this to work on something like an overflow container, uh, you probably have to find a way to pass an element ref in here to say use this element ref as the viewport, don't default to the browser's screen. Uh, but I think ultimately the algorithm here would remain uh, relatively unchanged. And uh, I think it's just a fun exploration. And again, just a, a look at the position sticky CSS property, which uh, really provides a ton of functionality with next to no effort. So I'm pretty excited that I finally got around to investigating it.